Hey, it is Tuesday, April 20 something. I could tell you in just a second. Actually, I have not a clue. 22nd? I don't know. It's it's Tuesday. I, I don't know days. They all go together. Like there's the sun, the day star, and then there's sleep. And, and then that's it. I have not a clue. But um, we actually left the house today. It was actually nice. Jumped in the truck and went to PetSmart. We needed more cat food. Um, and I'll say this, I actually wore a mask. Um, I have a, like the Shemag and I had a, you know, we both had, um, had it pulled up. So that was weird walking around feeling like I was about to rob a bank. Um, (laughs) my, uh, my mother-in-law is actually making us masks, like actual masks that tie up like you were in mash. Um, and she has, is going to put a filter and everything in it. So it's going to be pretty, pretty hardcore. So that's a whole new way of being right. Just a completely different way of existing. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm struggling to adjust. I'm, I'm really, I'm really struggling to adjust. And I think it's because as, as much of an introvert as I am, I really do like that closeness with people. I really do like that. I don't know that interaction. Um, yeah, I, I'm just getting used to it, but it was really nice. And I'll say this, we were, we were in the pet smart and Rebecca wants fish. She also wants every other animal known to the planet. <laughs> but so we're, we went over and we were looking at fish and we were trying to see if they had gerbils and hamsters and a father and her and his daughter, uh, father and her daughter. That's funny. Father and his daughter <clears throat> were coming down the aisle and you know, we're here, here's the fish. They're coming down from the aisle and he had on a shemag too. We matched. It was kind of funny, but his daughter bolted off from him and ran right up to me. I walked away. He, he walked over and kind of put his big, huge fatherly hands on her shoulder and squatted to explain why in this day and age, you, you just can't run up to be next to somebody regardless of the reason, even if it's for a cute little animal in a cage or aquarium or whatever they were in. But, um, he was really nice about it. Uh, I, I walked away, gave her space, gave her birth to be able to see the animals because I don't, I don't know where they've been and they don't know where I've been right now. We could be dangerous for each other, which is again, very weird to, instead of looking at for the possible good in another person to think of, I could get them sick and then walk away or they could get me sick and walk away. It's very it's very weird. And just, I'll be honest, it it feels wrong. Um, still going to do it. Please don't hear that. But it just, it feels really weird to walk away from people when I love building people up and encouraging people. Um, you know, two months ago, a month ago, I would have squatted down and pointed to all the animals and had a conversation with a kid. Um, kids are great. They're fun, especially when they're around animals. So anyway, um, that was my morning. And then, like I said, Chick-fil-A, because you can't go wrong with Chick-fil-A. Um, it's really, you know, Kanye West, I, y'all, I don't know what to do with him. What I do know is that one line from that one song cracks me up every time. It's not the best song ever written or close to it. It's like on the par of, I don't know, what are some that I would think are the same level of badness? I don't even know, Lady Gaga or um, K.O., what's her name? Who's the 14? Well, she's not 14 now, but she's always just throwing a temper tantrum about somebody she dated. um, Swift, Swift, whatever her name is. Anyway, um, bad music today. God. So (laughs) now that I have room to duck, I listen to country and praise and worship. So those are my two genres. Uh, which for me, they lift me up. Um, but teach their own. Everybody should be able to listen to what they want to, whether or not it's our style, right? Um, just like a child should be able to run up and look at animals and not fear their life because of this this illness. So all of that being said, the verse today is taken from Romans, uh, chapter eight, verse one, Romans being written by Paul. 
I don't know about y'all. I've, I've struggled with Paul over the years. Really, really struggled. There are times where I'm like spot on with him. Other times, I'm like, did you want to work that out in therapy? Because there are people that can help you work out your issues. Um, and I think that's why it's important to have Paul in the Bible, because we get to see um, where his healings needed to be, where he had issues, where he was healed, where his encounters really changed his life. Um, I think that's really, it's important for us to see that we're okay in ourselves. We don't have to be perfect. We can have issues and the things that surround us can really inform how we see things. Uh, you know, I think that's, it's important to be able to see a mirror in the Bible and not to be like, oh, it's just some historical text. It's not, it's a living, breathing word of God. Um, and that's, Thank you for that. That's that's important. So the verse today is from Romans chapter eight, verse one. And it's therefore there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. Um, so that's taken from the Amplified Bible, which I think is just a it's just a fun Bible. I like the. <clears throat> The translation there. So anyway, I, I thought this was very pertinent for today because I've been struggling um, between going from absolutely we need to shut everything down because people could get sick and die to, oh my God, we need to open everything up because people don't have jobs and cannot eat and will die. So I've been struggling. And in that, there are times where you're going to be okay. You're going to be unhappy. You could be happy. You could find laughter. You could find moments of great joy. But also, you can't forget that you're you're going to feel all of the emotions, anger, hatred. You're going to get in fights with people. You might pick fights or they might pick fights with you. But there are going to be places where we really flub up, where we make a mistake, where we're not the best version of ourselves that Jesus could ever imagine, Right? Um, and I think it's really important. I, there's a cable and I went to reach for it to fix it. And then in my head was like, you don't have to fix that right now. But those are the things like where I, I am not ADD. I don't have ADHD. I, I'm, I've yet to really know, like I know people as adults who, who were diagnosed, but no one as like when I was a kid, it wasn't a thing. So I don't even know if that's it. Maybe I haven't. Who knows? Anyway, the cable distracted me. So, but that's that's also part of what we are going through is that there's going to be lots of times where we are distracted, where we're angry, where we're sad, depressed. You might think things that you've never thought before. For me, I have been feeling like I have just been an ultimate failure. And, you know, I was, I was doing okay with all of this stay at home stuff. Um, I was, I really was. I'm an introvert. I love, I'm a homebody. I love being home. I heard a noise. Um, so I, I was okay. And then April 3rd happened and, you know, I was let go. I was not expecting it. In fact, I thought we were safe because it's kind of what we were led to believe now I think the entire company is going to go over and under and well seeing how long this is going to go on and how how many businesses are being impacted I think a lot of um I think a lot of the hospitality industry is really going to suffer and any any big places if they rely on the small business franchises it, it's just it's going to be difficult um Anyway, but I felt like a failure. I didn't understand why I wasn't seen as someone who was valuable. You know, I'd been there seven years. There's nothing I didn't know about that company. Um, now, I also know that I, I value, well, my values were not meshing. I, I valued my clients and my clients' experiences, um, Probably a little too personally. Probably. They really, when, when my client said something to me, I took it to heart. 
Um, I only had, of all of my clients, I only had one that I, I would joke and say was toxic. And it's because every time we got on the phone, they screamed for nothing that had anything related to me and everything that needed to be, they needed to take care of. But okay, fine. You want to scream at me? Great. I don't want to talk to you ever. But then I had clients that were like my best friends that we would text back and forth because for my work number. Um, and then, like I said, April 3rd happened and everything I thought completely changed. You know, I'm in a process. Um, I'm in a discernment for going into ordained ministry in the Episcopal Church. I, I feel called to be a priest. I feel called to pastor. With all of my failings, all of my informalities, um, <laughs> I feel called to love. I feel called to shepherd. Um, there's there's something sacred in folks letting you walk with them through every part of their lives. Good, bad, pretty, ugly, doesn't matter. Sacred. It's a gift. Um, so this job allowed me to do all the things I wanted to do. With, a, with my discernment. And I started freaking out because I was like, oh, like, oh my gosh, I don't, I have an income. And I liked my income. It was, it was a nice income. Um, and so I struggled. I felt, and I still do on occasion. I felt less than, I felt like a, com like a complete and utter failure. Um, like I was no longer a partner in my relationship. I was no longer an equal no matter how many times I was told that's untrue. And this, this verse in my prayer time and morning, morning prayer this morning, it occurred to me that because my faith is in the Lord, he is my personal Lord and savior. It is not something that I just practice on a Sunday. Um, it is something that I live every day, every minute of every day. And I try to express throughout every faction of my being. And it doesn't mean I, I succeed every second of every day. Clearly, I'm very sarcastic sometimes. But my heart really yearns to be a symbol of who Jesus is, right? So I know that it's not him who's condemning me. It is myself. It's that earthly flesh that puts on those those goals, <laughs> you know, everybody wants to be a part of the 1%. You don't have to worry about anything. You just have more money than you know what to do with. It's great. Is it? If you have more than you need, can, can I truly be a part of a community? Or would I find other reasons to condemn myself? I don't have as much as this other bazillionaire. So this verse made me stop and think, am I a failure? Because, you know, the last two weeks I have been more busy than I ever was at work. But it's been everything that absolutely feeds my soul. Working with my rector, my priest, to build up our church's um, connections, build up our web presence, start live streaming services. And, you know, now he's like, oh. We're going to have a technology committee and he and I are building an entire digital content based community and service. And I've got so many ideas. I've, I've been able to have the time to research how to do that. Mixers, Bluetooth microphones that will go into a mixer, the audio process is just everything. And then realizing how really just how much work that it will cost because it requires moving all the different components from spread throughout the church like computers over here but all of the sounds equipment is over here we don't have a mixer so it's just a lot right but it's life-giving like I don't I don't think I've ever felt more alive so because it's me condemning not Christ I'm the one that's been pushing myself down I'm the one that's been digging this grave for myself not him, certainly not my wife. It's been me because of my worldly expectations of myself. So today I've really been focusing on well, what are my expectations of myself? 
what does that mean? Like, what are you, what are yours? What are your expectations? What do you hold yourself accountable to? Um, for myself, it's always been that I'd be, well, <laughs> I'd be the breadwinner. I would be the income earner so that I can support my family and Rebecca can do whatever she wants, whatever makes her heart sweet, heart sing. I don't have that ability now. And she just got a pretty cool raise. Insurance, y'all, it will always be there. But I don't want to take advantage of her and keep her from her happiness. So that's where, that's my struggle. But she's not putting me down. She's the one saying, take your time, find something that gives you life. If you see a job that you want, then apply for it. Not like the one that I applied for and apparently took a test I didn't have to finish and finished it incorrectly. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is something truly freeing about that statement. There's a really cool song. I think it's done by Integrity Hosanna. That's literally that verse in song form. But we cannot condemn ourselves just because something outside of our control happens, regardless of whether we think it's a good decision or logical or (sighs) terrible. God always has a plan. I've been more fed by making these videos and finding verses and being able to get back into speaking extemporaneously because I'll tell you, and you're probably like, duh, but I try not to write something down because I will read it instead of interacting, right? And, you know, yeah, I'm looking at a camera and a green dot on my laptop. But also, I'm an only child. Really, there's like 500 people behind that. (laughs) I'm kidding. Not really. Um, But we cannot be the ones to condemn ourselves if Jesus is not. In fact, it's one of the reasons Jesus died was so that we cannot condemn ourselves. We are not to be condemnable. We might mess up. We might. we, We all will fall short of the glory of God, fall short of the cross. But that's why he was on the cross. So live in your moment. When you have hard times, when you feel like a failure, you're gonna. It's okay. But never let yourself sink to where you can't get back to a place where you know that Jesus is not. That when Jesus looks at you, he sees the apple of his eye. That when God looks at you, all he sees is this magnificent creation that he made. That he went, look, I was this gift that I put into your mother's womb. And you were born, you're a gift. Would you ever condemn a gift? I think that's the question. Would you condemn a gift? So on that note... There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Take it to heart. Know that you are loved. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Come visit me on Calvary Episcopal Church's website, or I'm sorry, Facebook page. Morning prayer every morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a good time. There's also a discussion group. Um, visit my website. Uh, link is in the profile. Go to my Facebook page, Quinos under underscore underground. Um, and like, subscribe, and share. Let's get this going. Let's keep struggling together. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how you're feeling. And if you need anything, I'm here. You are loved. You are cherished. Have a great Tuesday.